All right. So this time, let us talk about uh, lesson three, classification and functions of carbohydrates. So of course, we have first um, is monosaccharides. So the single unit sugar or the one sugar unit. Uh, it is the simplest among the carbohydrates, which contain free aldehyde or the CHO, as I mentioned in my previous discussion, and a ketone or a C double band with O. Uh, they are known to be as functional groups in the organic compounds that have two or more hydroxyl groups or OH. So that's why in the monosaccharide sugar, you'll be able to see a lot of OH group bonded to the carbon. So as mentioned before in our previous lesson, that the general formula for the monosaccharide is CNH2ON uh, or CNH2NON. So monosaccharides are sugars that cannot be further hydrolyzed into simple carbohydrates. So meaning that uh, you can no longer um break down monosaccharide sugar into a sim into a more simpler carbohydrates because monosaccharide is already the simplest uh monosaccharide or simplest carbohydrates so they can be classified based on the number of carbon atoms for example triose so there are three uh carbon in the structure uh, tetros, 4, pentose, 5, hexo, 6, heptose, 7, and others. So you, you just have to follow the, the basic naming in the organic compounds, like that of the mono, di, tri, tetra, penta, and so on. And on the basis of functional groups that possess, for example, aldoses, those having aldehyde groups, and ketoses, those having ketone group. That's why. Uh, when you name it, it as trios, you can still add the aldehyde group so that you can be able to, to tell whether the, the compound has an aldehyde group or a ketone group. So monosaccharides are classified also in two ways. So a monosaccharide is the one of the classes of uh, carbohydrates and monosaccharides can now still be Classified. So, uh, first of all, based on the number of carbon atoms present in them. So, how many carbon atoms? Is it is it four? Is it five? Is it six? And secondly, based on the presence of the carbonyl group, whether it is an aldehyde or a ketone. And the naturally occurring monosaccharides contain three to seven carbon atoms per molecule. So, when we speak of naturally occurring monosaccharides, these are monosaccharides that exist in nature. So. Monosaccharides of specific sizes may be indicated by names composed of a stem denoting the number of carbon atoms in suffix OSE. So you have to remember when we speak of the OSE, we are talking about sugar. For example, the term trios, tetros, pentos, and hexos signifies monosaccharides with respectively 3, 4, 5, and 6 carbon atoms. So if you have, for example, um, uh, heptose, so that is already seven carbon atom. So monosaccharides are also classified as ketoses or aldoses. So again, uh, if if the monosaccharide has an aldehyde, it is an aldose. If it has a ketone, then it is a ketose. So those monosaccharides that contain an aldehyde functional group are called aldoses, and those containing a ketone functional group on the second carbon are Ketose. So the, the, the ketone group is located on the second carbon atom of the sugar. So combining these classification systems gives general names that indicate both the type of uh, with both the type of carbonyl group, sorry, and the number of carbon atoms in a molecule. For example, so uh, aldo, uh, meaning al aldehyde. Tetro, meaning to say that there are four carbon in the structure, and OSE to signify that it is a sugar. So that's why the term is aldotetros or aldotetroses. How about aldopentose? So aldo, aldehyde, pentose, meaning five carbon, OSE, meaning it is sugar. So aldopentoses. And then ketopentoses, aketoheptoses. 
and uh, so on. Uh, Aldo, Aldehyde, Keto, Ketone, okay, and so on and so forth. So these are, uh, this is the classification of monosaccharide. So number of carbon, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, triosis, tetrosis, pentosis, hexosis, and heptosis. And then uh, the aldose form of triosis is glyceraldehyde, erythrose, if it is for carbon, ribosylose, glucose, galactose, glucoheptose. And when it comes with ketosis, uh, you have here dihydroxyacetone, erythrolus, ribulosylulus, fructose, sedoheptolus. So that's how you uh, name the, the ketosis and the aldoses. So the aldoses can also be further classified into a family three. So this done for the diisomer since there are naturally occurring sugar. So diisomer yung gagamitin natin in looking into the family tree of the sugar. So you have to start with the D-glyceraldehyde, the one with the three carbon, and then keep adding a new chiral center just below the carbonyl group. So for example, adding a new chiral center for the glyceraldehyde generates two additional stereoisomers, D-erythrose and d -terios, which are aldotetrosis. So these in turn generate four possible aldopentoses and then aldohexoses. So let us look into this. So this is the one uh, I am explaining a while ago. So the family of the aldoses, so we have there the D-glyceraldehyde. So the aldoses, meaning these are all aldehyde. So um, you have to add another another uh, OHH, no? So after the carbonyl group. So the carbonyl group is... Let us see. Let us put label on it. So this is our glyceraldehyde. This one. And then as mentioned a while ago, um, for you to, to add more carbon so that you can be able to look into the other uh, form of um, sugar. So you have to add carbon after the carbonyl group. So the CH... Double band O is the carbonyl group. Yeah, you call it as carbonyl group. And then you have to add. So since the one on the left is the right row, so uh, the one that you add here, I know this one is still here. The OH is found on the right side. So it's D. I think all of these are D. So all of these are uh, having the D isomer reason. And then, when you add, so you have here OH group here, and then enantiomer here. So the name here is D erythrose, and then the other one is D -tryos. And then you have here another, which is uh, erythrose can still be added uh, another stereogenic center. Because these are all stereogenic centers. So another, nadagdag, is this one. That one, no? Okay, and on this side is this one, the enantiomer of ribose. There you go. So you have here OH, 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 the one on the right. And then in this side, there. No? So it is the mirror image of that. But however, the, the one at the bottom is not. Okay, and then, then this can still go down by adding more carbon group there, here. After the, again, after the carbonyl group. So you have there the d alios the alteros the glucose and um, the alios and the alteros for the d ribose And then, you have here the the diarabinose. When you add more carbon to it, it will form the glucose and the manose. And then here on the right side, you have there the the diterios. When you add here, you no, know, you add more carbon to it, so it will be known as the xylose and the 
lines us. And then, when you add more, to make it 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you added here, carbon here, and then the orientation, HOH is there. So, you can be able to form on this side, in the lysos, the same thing. Okay? So, with that, there are, uh, from the glyceraldehyde, it can, it can uh, create the other forms of monosaccharide sugar like the dihalose, the aldose, the glucose, the manose, the gulose, the idose, the galactose, and the talose. All right. So there are uh, the two main differences between aldoses and ketoses. Ketoses contain a ketone rather than an aldehyde, obviously, because the C double band O is on carbon number two. Ketoses have one less chiral center than the corresponding aldehyde. So that's why it is one less chiral center because the the position of the ketone makes it this carbon is is it is not it is not a chiral center because there's double bond O. So the famine three starts with the simplest ketones, dihydroxyacetone. It is built by adding a new stereogenic carbon between carbon two and carbon three. So defructose is the most commonly naturally occurring ketones found in many plants wherein it is open by the glucose, thus forming sucrose. So let us look into it. Okay, so you have here the diketos, diketoses. So our parent, uh, our parent structure is dihydroxyacetone. So if you'll notice the the carbonyl group is always located at the center. Second, in the second carbon. So you have here dihydroxyacetone and dihydrolus. So when you add, you add here on this side. Okay, you add there. And then you add more to it. You will see the blue is going down. But still, it is under D, no? Because the OH group, this one, is found at the right side. So that way, that's why it is the, the ribulus. And then you also have, um, when you further go down and or when you add more, you'll be able to create D uh, secos and D proctos. So there are five carbons there. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay? So I hope that you're getting the idea. When you add, you can be able to add two uh, an enantiomer of each other. Okay. Enantiomer in a sense, yeah. No, it's not literally enantiomer just like the examples a while ago. Because if you'll notice here, the first set of OH, 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 uh, do not actually move. It's only the, it's only the additional carbon oxygen structure, carbon uh, CO, CHO, structure no has the uh, opposite so you have here the OH at the right and OH at the left however the rest are not then on the right side you have here a uh, desilolus no so still uh it is the OH is found at the right side so that's why it is D and then wait if you add more to the cellulose, you can be able to obtain the sorbose and the titagatose. So you have here, so one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And here is one, two, three, four, five, six. At six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So they're all six. They're all monosaccharide. So then you have there the D sorbos and then D tagatose. Okay, so as mentioned, each chiral center is added below the carbonyl group, generating two additional stereoisomers. All right. So let us now talk about specifically about glucose. So glucose is the most common monosaccharide consumed and in, and is the circulating sugar of the bloodstream. So insulin and glucagon regulate blood levels of glucose. So insulin lowers it, glucagon increases the uh, blood sugar level. 
So it is our globus is the most abundant in nature, uh, simply because when when disaccharide are digested, so it will always form glucose. Then it is nutritionally most important, uh, simply because most of the food that we eat, no, contains sugar and sugar can can uh, be broken down into glucose. So grapefruit good source of glucose, twenty to to thirty percent by mass. Also named grape sugar, dextrose, and blood sugar, which is around 70 to 100 mg per 100 ml of blood. And then you also have in glucose the six-membered cyclic form. Now, the six-membered cyclic form will be tackled in the Howard projection. No? So how about fructose? So fructose is slightly sweeter than glucose. Um, it is an intermediary in metabolism and is found in many fruits. So one of the form is ketohexos, and the sweetest tasting of all sugar. So it means that it is the, the sweetest sugar, and it is found in many fruits and in honey, and good dietary sugar due to higher sweetness. So all you have to do is to add a little amount of fructose, and your uh, coffee or your whatever you're drinking you know, will become sweet. And then uh, if made into a cyclic form, so there are five members. So there are five signs. And then uh, galactose, uh, they are component of lactose or milk sugar. It is also found in some plants, gums, and pectins. Galactosemia results from inability to metabolize galactose. If treated, galactosemia can be managed medically. Untreated galactosemia may result in mental retardation, liver damage, or even death. So that's why if um, if uh, you know somebody with you know with galactosemia, first it, it has to be diagnosed before you can say that that person has galactosemia. So it is the milk sugar. It is synthesized in humans. Uh, also called brain sugar, part of the brain and nerve tissue, used to differentiate between blood types. And uh, it has also six-membered cyclic form. Uh, Proctos a while ago has six-membered cyclic form. So another monosaccharide is ribose, ribose and deoxyribose, which are both aldopentose that are components of DNA and RNA. So um, you have here, no? Uh, that ribose is a part of the RNA and the ribose is that part of the ATP. It is also part of the DNA or the deoxyribonucleic acid. And when you create this as a ring or in a cyclic form, it is only a five-membered cyclic form. So this is an example of how picture structure can be made into a Howard uh, projection formula. Of course, uh, there will be step by step, but in this example, it only shows the when are you going to use the alpha and the beta term. So, for example, alpha form. When when uh, alpha form when the OH of C one, okay, this one is the C one, and CH two of C five, and that's the C five. So this is C one. And then this is C5. Okay. So when they are on opposite sides, it is in alpha form. So this one is on top. And this one is at the bottom. So meaning to say that these are this is alpha D glucose. And this one, beta form. OH of C1 and C2H or 5 of C5 are on the same side. So this is beta D glucose since they are on the same side. All right? Okay. So there are five reactions of monosaccharides. And these are oxidation to acidic sugars, reduction to sugar alcohols, 
glycosine formation, phosphate ester formation, and amino sugar formation. Okay, so let's talk first about oxidation to acidic sugar. So meaning to say that sugar aldehyde or ketone can be oxidized into an acid and drive the and drive the reduction of a metal ion. So oxidation can yield a three different types of acidic sugar depending on the type of oxidizing agent used. So for for you to be able to oxidize uh, sugar into a into an acidic sugar there should be an oxidizing agent. So you'll be performing this in your laboratory activity. A uh, weak oxidizing agents such as tollens and Benedict solution oxidize the aldehyde and, and to give an aldonic acid. On the other hand, a reducing sugar is a carbohydrate that gives a positive test with tollens and Benedict solution. So aldehyde sugars should show positive tests for the Benedict test because of the aldehyde functional group in the molecule. So let's see. So this is the reaction no, for the Benedict's test for aldehyde. So you have here the aldehyde. Uh, this, this is, uh, no, this is uh, depending, on, depending on the kind of aldehyde, it could be uh, five carbon aldehyde or a six carbon aldehyde or even a longer carbon aldehyde plus copper from the from the chemicals from the Benedict's test, and then you may likewise use uh, sodium hydroxide, which will be added. No, so you have your carbon uh, copper, and then sodium hydroxide as part of the um, to induce the reaction, and then because of that. It will form an acid. Uh, this acid is a carboxylic acid. You have heard the C C O O H, no? So C O O H. And then you have here the the resulting uh, red precipitate or the copper copper to oxide, a uh, copper one oxide. Which is uh, that shows brick red precipitate. Another uh, under under the oxid under the we call that oxidation to acidic sugar is the enzyme oxidation. So in biological systems, enzymes can oxidize the primary alcohol, high alcohol end of an aldose such as glucose, without oxidation of the aldehyde group to produce an aldoronic acid. So this is the glucose, wherein uh, there will be enzyme oxidation. So this is an enzyme catalyzed oxidation that will be able to produce still an acid. Okay. So here, the CH2OH, when oxidized, by uh, enzyme will become COOH, okay? So making it as a an acidic, no? It is known as uronic acid. So another reaction is a reduction to sugar alcohol. So you'll have the sample, like for example, an aldose or a ketose, and then reduce the hydroxyl group or the OH group using hydrogen as the reducing agent. So the product is the corresponding polyhydroxy alcohol or known as a sugar alcohol. And of course, we have also sorbitol. No? Sorbitol is used as moisturizing agents in foods and cosmetics and as, and as a sweetening agent in chewing gum. Okay. So this is how a uh, sorbitol are is formed. No? So you have here the formula for the D-glucose. And then we have here the 
formula for diglucitol or disorbitol. Okay. So another one, uh, another reaction is glycoside formation. So for simple for simple carbohydrates, monosaccharide and disaccharide of simple sugars such as glucose or fructose, disaccharide are two monosaccharide connected by a bridging O atom called glycosidic bond as in sucrose. So where we are, uh, I'll be showing you different um, reactions, no, but it shows the the glycosidic bond of the carbohydrates. So what is a glycosidic bond? It is covalent bond between a hemiacetal or hemiketal and an alcohol. So glycoside is a compound form when a sugar in the cyclic form is bonded to an alcohol through a glycosidic bond to another sugar molecule as shown on the next slide. So you have here here, no. So this one is the combination of alpha and alpha glucose and beta glucose to form a sucrose. Okay. So again, this one, no. They will be bonded, no. So there will be removal of water or dehydration. Uh, so that glucose and fructose can be combined to form sucrose. So this one is a bond between uh, alpha-1 and beta-2, not the 1-4 linkage. Most, um, most uh, disaccharides that you will see no, are in 1-4 glycosidic linkage. So that's why one of the products is H2O, because there is a removal of water here. Okay, so OHH, so this is two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. Okay, so in continuation, so disaccharides consist of two monosaccharide units linked together with glycosidic bond in the alpha or beta orientation. So the most important of them are sucrose, lactose, and maltose, so we know that. Uh, wherein sucrose is the most abundant and consists of a molecule of a of an alpha glucose and beta fructose that are linked together. Lactose is found in milk in dairy products and consists of galactose and glucose linked by a beta 1,4 glycosidic bond. And maltose is mainly produced by partial hydrolysis of starch and consists of two glucose units linked by an alpha 1,4 glycosidic bond. So this is the formation of uh, sucrose. Um, we have here the the one two no alpha one and beta two linkage, and this one is the formation of maltose. You have here the one four glycosidic linkage. So, but the same same uh, process no removal of water or dehydration. There, there you go. So OHH removal of that will be able to connect uh, this one and this four. And then you'll be able to get uh, water out of the process. And then this one is the formation of lactose. So you have here beta D galactose plus beta D glucose can form uh, B lactose. Okay, so do not forget to, to uh, indicate whether it is a uh, 1 4 linkage or 1 2 linkage, but in this side, you can see that there are, there is a one two, no one two linkage, a one four linkage. All right, so let us continue this on the next video.